Okay, so, right, the UV unwrapping of the receiver. So, what I've done here is, I've actually modelled out a speed loader um, to use with the the bullets, because obviously in New Vegas you'd, you'd have the, the speed loader come in with the reload, so you could uh, place the bullets into the cylinder more easily. You wouldn't just whack them in by hand, and that would be a much more complicated and lengthy reload, so speed loader. Um, we do have slightly lower UVs on the speed loader than the, the weapon because that saves space so we can dedicate it more to the weapon because the weapon is on screen for a lot longer amount of time in the grander scheme of things than the speed loader which you know only pops in for a, a second or two, maybe even less depending on how fast I want to uh, animate it. But yeah, I'm going to be uh, UVing this with the rest of the receiver as well just so that that's also in the uh, in the UV as well, and while I'm talking about that, I should remember to unhide my iron sights so that we get them all in. So yeah, I'll just select everything and go into an edit UV. Unhide, uh, toggle the squares for the UV square, and we're going to try and put all of these. I'll make it full screen. We're trying to get all of these shells into this zero one square. And uh, I say zero one simply because it's just a you know a coordinate system. So this would be you know zero zero up to one one. You know if you've ever done coordinates in in math class, maths, then you know you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so basically, if yeah, this comes into this 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 is relevant later on when we're doing stuff like UV mirroring and we want to move the the shells along one UV square. But I'll explain that later. We don't need to worry about that now. So it looks like the iron sights have gone into some of the cylinder shells. So what we want to do here is organize our shells so that all the larger shells, at least this is what I like to do starting out, is to take all of the, the moderately large shells and put them on the right side. So this is obviously the every time you UV unwrap it's it's different you know the prop is different you're not you're not ever going to really encounter the exact same UV unwrapping experience every time so it's more of a if you're watching this you should take away sort of the the methodology more than the actual I think that's all you really can take away from it really is the the idea of what you should do during UV unwrapping what kind of planning you should take so yeah, I just thought I'd record this entire process because I, I get the sense that uh, some of the earlier tutorial was a bit brief. So yeah, if you want to put some music on while you watch me do this, <laughs> then I wouldn't mind. Okay. Uh, so yeah, there we go. We have a sort of um, structure going on here where we can see these are the larger parts that need to go in. These are the smaller. So what I'm going to do is just start with the largest part and just plunk it down in a corner and then go from there so I might place these here start off with it blocky and then basically just bring in more shells that you think might fit and then along along the way you sort of choose rescale all of the shells and uh, choose how big you you think so basically you have to predict how big all the shells should be to fit into this zero one square so we'll hit control a and oh yeah uh, hit z to make sure we've we're not missing any shells that are out here and basically predict how large we'll need these shells to be. We want as tight a fit as possible. We want to fit all of these shells into this 
square and use up as much space as possible because that means the pixels of the texture will you know will be the shells will be as big as possible to fit as much texture space as possible onto each surface these long parts are usually good for propping right up against corners make sure the angle snap is on if you're rotating UV shells um, I might as well talk about padding so this empty space between shells is called the gutter uh, and for a 2k map uh, you want about 16 pixels of padding between each shell so that's what we're doing here is a basically a 2k map at least I'm planning ahead to do that if it was a 1k map then you could maybe go a lot tighter with the the uh, the shells together and the reason behind this is something called mip mapping which is when a texture gets reduced down uh, by power of two so that when the asset gets further and further away from the camera the game loads a lower and lower res of texture to compensate and the lower texture gets um, the mu the sort of muddier it gets so your gutters get sort of blurry and uh, <laughs> again this is another concept which is hard to describe without pictures but um, the gist of it is you, you don't want your shells to be too close together for a, for a 2k map this amount of padding is, is fine but you don't need to obsess over it as much as I'm doing right now I'm sort of just wasting time here really talking because <laughs> I can't do both at once uh, I'm not good at multitasking so thinking ahead we we probably need to scale this up again yeah I'll try and use this side of the UV square for all of these shells and then see how we go from then on but uh yeah honestly UV mapping is a pretty basic process it's hard to teach it really you need to like animation you just need to keep doing it and doing it like most artistic uh, pursuits you need to just keep doing it over and over again and practicing until you get the uh, the idea most people hate UV mapping well I wouldn't say most <laughs> I'd say you know some people hate it some people love it I find it quite therapeutic uh, I would have music on but I'm recording <laughs> So you can sort of see where I'm trying to slot things in where it would make sense. Some of the more difficult shapes like this should really go in early because you kind of have to plan around them. This is for the uh, grip side which you really don't ever see so I should probably scale it down. Put it somewhere weird like here. Hmm leave it there for now, don't know <laughs> maybe just pop these I usually end up moving stuff around quite a bit once most of the objects are in anyway so so that's for the yeah, so if we go into x-ray view we can see that that's for the inside of the cylinder which isn't really very uh, important at all you really really rarely see that so I think we can get away with scaling it down a bit just to fit into this gap here if I can find it it's the same for the part which goes into it that is quite close on the padding to be honest but because it's inside the weapon and if we're talking mip maps the, the asset's going to be pretty far away so it's probably not that important <laughs> what else we got wow this big part that I completely forgot about be pretty embarrassing I forgot this wrong because uh, UV mapping is <laughs> pretty straightforward <laughs> so if I make mistakes it's because I'm not really concentrating
Yeah, this is quite big. So yeah, that's, that's part of the speed loader actually, so that is going to come up to the camera quite close, but again, because the speed loader isn't too important, scaling it down slightly isn't too big of a loss. What's this? Also speed loader. That's actually, yeah, that's a similar scale. I scaled it down, but that's fine. So yeah, we're likely going to have to shrink it now. And move certain parts back out to the corners because we're likely going to have to fit more in. Yeah, so if you have parts sort of floating out into the center here, it might be best to clear them out just so that you can. Uh, Make sure your straight parts are in a nice, snug place. Can be a bit of a trap to group things together like this because you think, oh, I'll just pick that up and throw it here. Uh, but it, it takes up like a long space, which could be taken up by shapes like this. So instead, I should probably put these over here and separate them so that you know, in my head, I don't just grab them all as one thing, and I realise that, you know, they can be more granular than that. This is quite big, so I'll pop that there. That's quite thin. Have we got a really thin? We do, yeah. But that won't fit there. This will fit here, though. I hope you like Tetris, because this is basically Tetris. <laughs> I think I'll bring in more of the more annoying shapes now. Anything with angles in it is quite... Anything that isn't a block. Circles and rectangles are fine. But this is especially weirdly shaped. Kind of just have to make a decision really where you want to put stuff. This is quite big. What is that? Ah, the underside of the inside of the frame. So again, I can get away with a bit of. I doubt you'd ever really see that. And obviously, these these holes are good for putting smaller. What are these? Okay, so those are quite important. Probably shouldn't scale those down because they're right there on the the uh, cylinder but for say, small shapes like these you can drag them inside these circles and that helps conserve space for the rest of the the texture How are we doing? Yeah. Still want to place these hammers somewhere because they are quite a difficult shape. If you have lots of tiny pieces like these, then it is uh, good. That's a bit messy. It is good to. Uh, have lots of these smaller shapes because you can just slot them in, in, in inside these weird sort of alcoves. <laughs> these are tiny. Ah oh, yeah, they're the edges of the spindle thing. Always good to check if your UV is important. That one is.
Ah, uh, yeah, I missed this. This is a quite difficult shape. So I want to place this somewhere and work around it. There's two. Hmm. Okay, that's important because you'll see that when the cylinder swings out. What about this? Okay, so that's the front of the gun. So it's slightly less important. I should probably prioritize... Where did it go? <laughs> yeah, prioritize this over <laughs> the... Uh, the other part. This is where things start to get tricky. Ah, you see, if this was flipped the other way, then you could put it somewhere here or... But you can't really. Maybe replace one of these straight rectangles. I rejig this a tad. Yeah, what's this for? Okay, so these are, yeah, kind of important. This is less, so you can scale that down. That is quite low res, actually. Hmm. I think I'll keep it large, see if any of these are less important. Okay. It's mostly speed loader stuff. about this. I can maybe swap it around. Since that'll likely be covered by the hand when it's uh, being grasped. Snug. Yeah, the spaces we're really working with now are these gaps here. The weird angles start to come out. So sometimes you want to keep certain things straight. So if I was to do engravings on the cylinder later on, I would want this shell to be really straight and square, which it kind of isn't actually. I should go back and make it more square later on. You can see a bit of a, a bit of an angle up there for some reason. I think when I relaxed it, it didn't quite relax right. But anyway, yeah, you want it to be straight so that when you, if, for example, if you're in Photoshop and you know you were dropping a, a pattern here, you know it'd be fine over here. But as the UV starts to bend, you get some weird sort of warping. Here, see that the, the square is, you know, parallel with the with the cylinder up until here, where it starts to, you know, veer off a bit, and your pattern would also do that. Luckily, I put the seam on the right side of the cylinder, so that even as the cylinder rotates, you'd never actually see this slightly warped side. So that's fine. I'll fix that later. Okay, what else do we have? This hammer, which I do want to sort out. Yeah. Maybe just pop it here. Sometimes there's a difficult shape that you just can't can't get rid of. It just throws a wrench in your plans entirely. <laughs> What's this for? Inside, it's very unimportant, so we can scale this down almost entirely. Just pop it somewhere. 
Makes sense. Okay, so that's yeah, that's okay, so one's important, one's not. So this is the important one because it's the back of the shell casing. Whereas this one's less important, so we can so often round shapes uh, work well with other round shapes because you can sort of slot them into these circular gaps as well. So that's generally what you get is uh, okay. That's very unimportant. Really, really unimportant. You can uh, put s s circular shapes near other curves and obviously square shapes near other square shapes and then these weird shapes sort of end up jammed in the middle with all the, the tiny, tiny parts. That's generally how it goes. So at the end of it all we want to aim for about 15% UV usage. And you can check that with a certain programs. I use IPAC that, which is an auto packing program that doesn't really work anymore, at least at the time of this video that I know of. But uh, it's good for checking how much usage you have. This can maybe go in here. I'll use this trigger guard shape. What is that? It's the right side, isn't it? Yeah, so it's less important than left. All this important stuff is, if I haven't covered it before, I probably have, but this side of the the weapon is the most important because it's the side that's on the screen, you know, at all times. So it's going to be sat here and, you, you know, I think this is probably the most important surface for the gun other than the actual cylinder face itself. You definitely want high texel density or, you know, Small, these small squares means that they take up more space in the texture and they're therefore sharper in the texture whereas less important areas like the inside of the script which you'll probably never see I think I mod modeled this out in case I'm going to do like a broken grip where you can see through the through the grip and actually see the frame on the inside which is actually pretty cool you barely ever see that but this this right side of the the cylinder can be a lot less uh, dense so what I should do is remember to unhide my loader and reduce the size of this side because it's less important. But obviously I'll have to rethink my EVs just a bit. So yeah, not too much, quite a bit, but not too much. Because otherwise, you know, you might glance on the, the right side for some reason if you're in a melee attack or you're inspecting the weapon or something and you see the other side and it's really, really blurry. Like you don't want it to be unbelievably blurry because even at a glance you can see that it's it's wrong. It just feels off. Yeah. Especially the disparity between the difference between these these two surfaces you'd be able to tell instantly that something's off Ooh. sometimes you're just lucky and uh, this curve synergizes with this curve quite well <laughs> but even then I'm probably moving stuff around so <laughs> probably doesn't matter in the end but yeah if you're lucky then you know it all just slots together like it was fate Tiny pieces are quite hard to grab. Let's try and get. Uh... Okay. Super unimportant. I quite like that here for some reason. Oh, yeah, the guard. So it's sort of just shuffling around. I think what I would like to see in some kind of UV unwrapping program is 
the ability to sort of auto expand your shells so that they sort of bump up against each other to a certain padding size like if I would set it up here now and I was able to sort of do that I don't know maybe there's a setting somewhere where you can do that what is that <laughs> you just take a look at this diagonal edge I must have added it accidentally so what we'll do is we'll collapse to select the cylinder just delete that edge select all re-x-ray just tap it twice so that everything gets un -X rayed then we're back in business I must have done that when I was drag selecting the mesh and connecting it sometimes happens even if you have back face culling on which is supposed to stop you from selecting verts on the other side of the mesh so this is quite big you sometimes have to just sort of float your mouse around with the mesh until you see something obvious, at least for me so yeah, I might have to sacrifice this square part and probably end up somewhere else yeah, that's quite important So this is the front, this is the back. Mm, the back is, if you were to rotate it out, you wouldn't really see the... Yes, yeah, so that can be slightly smaller. Even just making it a tiny bit smaller usually helps massively with getting it to fit somewhere. Right, are there any other big pieces I'm missing? Hmm. This is a toughie. Ah, I can maybe break up these here to fit in somehow. Yeah, there we go. And then these need a new home. Ah, okay. And this is... Oh, wow, the underside. I don't think I even need that. So again, a collapse. Two. Set the face. Delete. Select all again, edit UV. And then that UV shell's completely gone, which is nice. <laughs> Gives you a bit of extra space to work with. That's why it's so important to really maximize your UV usage. Make sure you have no unnecessary faces. It can really make or break the uh, texel density on the mesh, really alter the, the, uh, the sharpness of the texture, the clarity. That's why sometimes you see, you know, props which have 2K maps on them, allegedly, and they just look so blurry, like it's a 1K, 1024 by 1024 pixel. Because the, the, the UV management wasn't done well. That's the thing about UV and wrapping it. It looks easy, but when you got this many parts to deal with, <laughs> and I'm trying to do it slightly quicker than normal, even for the tutorial. Ah, there is a big space here that I can maybe use. What about these parts? This is kind of where you want to be sort of slotting in, you know, pieces very tightly into the, the space. Uh, it's, it's still progressing well, the unwrapping. I'm still making progress, which is good. It means there's still space for shells in the future.
Can I sneak something in here? Yes, I can. It's square, so it shouldn't fit, but it does. Okay. So this, with the rail modification, you will actually see this area underneath, so... That is still a bit relevant of a surface. I can maybe tuck this one just inside the other. <laughs> so if you have similar shapes, then it's... Oftentimes you can just whack the other one inside. It's not too small, is it? Nah, nah, that's fine. What else do we have? I wonder if I can... This is a much better shell to put in here. But this one is quite large. <laughs> hmm. Round with round. That's the front, I think. Or is it? No, it's the speed loader again. I think I can afford to have it smaller. Yeah. That's good. Hmm. There you go. Just relaxed it. <laughs> Such a small part, you can often can't tell if it's fully relaxed or not. I think that was one of these bolt rivet nut things. Okay. We're onto the the minutia now, really. Minutia. I can't talk. I'm too focused. Could be a bit smaller, actually. I see a spot for you. Okay, so these do have to be quite a size because they're this part on the cylinder. So if you if you selected faces like I just did in the edit UVW window and you collapse it with those faces selected, when you go back to the mesh and you say hit four, those faces will be selected again. So it's a good way to, to tell, like I did before with that rogue edge on the inside of the cylinder. It's a good way to tell where uh, to locate where there might be issues on the mesh. If you see a problem in the UV, you can just select the verts near it and then exit out and, and find them like this. But you can see these are these are quite important. When this, the cylinder rolls out, swings out, you'll you'll be able to see those faces quite clearly. So I should have maybe thought about placing them earlier. But we'll see how it goes. Again, curves with curves, so. It's these tiny pointy out bits, which often, <laughs> you know, mess with the, the placement of your, your shells, like here. So you need to really zoom in and make sure they're not poking into each other. Because if, if a mesh does overwrap like that, not only will it make the bake really weird, they'll be, you know, conflicting with each other in the in the texture, but they'll also share the same texture space. So you know, when I'm texturing whatever this is, the hammer, I think it'll conflict with the inside of the the hammer face here. To be honest, the the inside of the hammer, because it's a double action revolver, and when you pull the trigger, the hammer snaps back and forward quite fast. You don't really see the inside very often, so what I could do is just quickly check. Make sure you always collapse to save your progress to the mesh. So yeah, it's quite an even UV on the inside. What I could do is... Actually shrink those down a bit. But again, not too much. That just gives me a bit of extra breathing room. This always did feel a bit out of place. Yeah, I think it's going quite well. I don't think I've embarrassed myself yet. <laughs> hmm. Yep, 
Yep. Love it when you find the perfect spot for one of them. Now this is where we might actually start getting excess room, and I'll show you what to do about that once I've actually placed all the parts. <laughs> but I might be speaking too soon on that. That is quite big actually, so I could pop that here, find somewhere else for this, if possible. Again, if you do a control A and select everything, it might be easier for you to see where the gaps in the UV are. You can sometimes spot things which you didn't realize before, such as the holes in, in certain meshes. Hmm. This is quite a chunky one. Just need to think for a sec. Okay, this is a bit thinner. And this can go... Ooh. Yep. That's the thing with these long ones, is when you scale them, they shoot out sideways really fast. Speed loader. Yeah, I can actually scale this up a bit now. Just bring these in closer so I can sort of visualize better. This is the biggest piece, I think. Not perfect, but. It'll do. I'm kind of putting myself to sleep with my own voice. <laughs> Hope I'm not uh, doing that to you. It's been a bit of a long day. So I've somehow gained <laughs> several pixels of space here. Everything's shuffling around. I think because I moved, I've been moving this shell closer and closer to the corner every time. Must have been when I scaled down everything. You suddenly gain a bit more space to move things around. What is this again? Yep. Yeah. Never see it. That doesn't mean it should be tiny. So I think if I can align these, we'll see if it works. No, it didn't. So what we need to do is collapse, go to just the cylinder, wrap it find those shells and uh, select the edge and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this align, yeah here align. When I click that or use the shortcut it then snaps it 90 degrees. So I'm just going to use my shortcut to make sure all of these are, yeah maybe these two, snapped to angle. You should be fun. So yeah, text tools is yeah has a few quirks. Okay, should start placing these square ones because they take up a bit of. Oh, actually, this is quite big. Yeah, relatively important. What's this? Oh, is it the underside? Ah. <laughs> so I could actually shrink this considerably. And that gives me after the auto save. Quite a bit of room. Room for activities. So we're getting there. This is quite a long one. I've had a plan for this one for a while actually, we'll see if it works. Just up here. So it's actually misaligned, but I'm kind of lazy, so I'm just going to un untoggle angle snap and try and eyeball it. It's probably not important. It's not important. <laughs> so we're good. 
pretty sure I'm not going to be engraving the inside of the <laughs> the tunnel for the spoke to swing out. Very close, very close now. So yeah, eventually you just sort of popping shapes into holes with reckless abandon because you haven't really got the uh, the need to to fit certain shapes into certain places anymore. Haha. -ha. <laughs> I think I get overly excited about this kind of thing. <laughs> Just ignore me. Uh, what's this? Okay, it's the actual casing of the bullet, so because that's duplicated five times it is quite important. All five bullets will share the same texture. So in a sense it's mirroring, so this shell needs to stay intact. But because I can't scale it any further sideways it does leave the space above, so I can grab something that has some thickness to it. Eh, yeah, I shall put something long there. These are usually a bit annoying to fit into certain places. Yeah. Still got three of these. <laughs> uh. Ah. I don't really want to scale these anymore. What are these? Okay. Mm, moderately important. I think I'm just going to do it. <laughs> Bump this one along. Bump that one along. It'll work out. So I'm going quite tight for some of these shapes, but I think it's fine. You go here. So here, 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 here. That's a big one. Haha. <laughs> Perfect. This is the satisfying part. Provided you realise you haven't accidentally UV'd. You've, you've missed out a certain part of the model that you haven't UV'd into the same texture. <laughs> That's always a bit of a nightmare. I'll swap that actually. Good thing I remembered that was there and I just put them there. Yeah, this is really important actually. That's the it's either the front or yeah, it's the back of the iron sights. That's gonna be right up to the camera. I might even scale that up a bit. If possible. Yeah. It is a bit weird if you again it's weird the other way, so if you scale something really far up, then it's like why is the texture so sharp there when it's blurry on the rest. <laughs> you can actually make the, the rest of the reasonably sharp parts of the model look blurry by uh, pure difference. Last few parts now. so tight. <laughs> ah. Not anymore. Is there another long one? 
sort of. Okay. Deal with these. Mm, I've got these gaps here that I could put something in. space here. That doesn't really warrant the importance of this shell, but that's fine. Good to be generous sometimes. This is a weird shape. Ah. Yeah. It's supposed to be like that. <laughs> this is with the part when you can sort of scale up shells to a certain size that you think warrants it being so so you know you have the space so you might as well but the, the ones that are different are these kind of really small ones because you have uh, you know a certain textile density here if you scale it up like oh, I can scale it this big you know because I've still got space then that one ends up looking <laughs> completely different to the the rest of the mesh. You can maybe get away with it if uh, if it's a different element. For example, the back of the bullet, which I think is... It was blue. I think it's here. No, that's the front. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to select that. But if I use this, which grows my UV selection, it does nothing. Great. <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. Uh, maybe it's this. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so uh, you can actually get away with a higher res if it's a different element like this bullet. We definitely want that part to be, you know, as large as as large as you think is fair, not as is possible, because it's going to have text on the back, and we don't want the text to be blurry. Looks like we're going to have a bit of excess space, actually. Which isn't the worst thing in the world. We've ended up with a pretty tight pack. <laughs> At this point it's really just a huge amount of space for each individual shell because they're so tiny they can literally go anywhere even though it's taking me several seconds to place each one <laughs> I think I'm just tired Let's go here. This is massive amount of space. Not sure I'm even going to bother rotating these. <laughs> They're the exact same piece, but because it's rotated in the right way, I just went for that one. <laughs> I was going to use these for something. These gaps.
Should have probably put the bigger pieces in first, but whatever. We got it done. That's the main thing. Yeah, I'll just pop these here. And we can start scaling up certain parts so that they're so for example this part here is on the back of the iron sights. I know I've already scaled it to use less space so it'd be good if I could actually scale this up more. But again not too close. These are part of the spoke, yeah. Whatever you call that, the teeth. Are they towards the? Yeah, they are actually facing the camera, so they could do with a bit of extra. Yeah, if I scaled this up, then it would start getting really close to the shell underneath so yeah make sure we collapse and save and yes yeah, so that's the unwrap done I've woken up again <laughs> and yeah the textile density you can sort of see if there's any issues we've actually been quite even to the the whole of the model here if we were in a game, for example, Battlefield or, I don't know, Counter-Strike or something, where you never really see the front of the gun, I think even in, in Half-Life 2, they had they didn't have any faces on the side of the, the AR2 or the, the SMG actually had missing faces on the right side to save on performance. <laughs> That's how bad it was in those days. But um, in a game like Fallout, in VATS, you know, you often see the gun front on from the front so you you do see the texture from the front sometimes and therefore you don't want ridiculously blurry textures because it definitely stands out so with the texture set up like this what I can do is I can hide unhide my other parts of the gun and actually preview what the the texture densities look like next to each other so if you remember I set up these different I've named them now 2048 for 12 times by 12 times tiling, 1024 for 6 times by 6 times, and 512 for 3 for 3, and it's you know power of 2. So this basically gives us a preview. So the grips and the barrels are all on this 1K map. Um, so you can see this is what 1K texture looks like next to 2K or 1K here. So they're kind of you can see that the the receiver is definitely going to be sharper than the other two parts with its 2k texture if we connect it to a 1k instead then yeah it would actually be slightly slightly blurrier so it's all sort of about a balance even though I, I haven't actually mirrored much of the receiver and you'd, you'd usually for a gun this small you might actually have just a 1k on the receiver but uh for a mod if you know we can set our own rules if we're making a mod <laughs> Uh, so we can use a 2k for the receiver but yeah that's the UV unwrapping hope you enjoyed it hope I didn't put you to sleep but it is a bit of a monotonous process <clears throat> but uh, obviously one of the most important parts and you shouldn't um, shouldn't neglect it that's what I'm trying to say hmm that 3 is slightly bigger than that 3 I think what I'll do is <laughs> I'll hunt down this UV and enlarge it. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Ah, oh, it's because the barrel, the barrel and the grip are unhidden. I'm stupid. Let's hide those. I was unwrapping everything at the same time, which I don't want to do. Yeah. So 
I do want to enlarge this just a bit. Slide it around so that the three's there. So I can compare them. That looks good. Hit Z to find the mesh already. That one's also a bit warped. Not that you really notice on such a small part, but... Then I'll just scale the others because I know roughly how big they should be. Good. If I can get IPAC that working, I think I'll show what uh, it spits out in terms of texture usage and tell you whether it's good or bad. <laughs> I think about 15% is what I said would be good. So yeah. Oh yeah, I was, oh yeah, another thing I want to show is with the barrels, because it's such a straight and long shape, <clears throat> what you actually get here is very long shells, obviously, and uh, there's often nothing you can really do about, for example, if, if you're UV unwrapping a sword, which I have done before, you have such a long shell that it only takes up like this part of the UV only you know, because it's such a long object. So what you could do here is actually combine two barrels in one material. So if I was to take the octagonal barrel, which I've already unwrapped in the same style as the standard actually, but what I could do is if I'm clever enough. No, it's still not working. Ah, oh, it's because I'm using the wrong one. So <laughs> okay, so I'll explain the selection here. So if I select this part and keep clicking this button, it grows the selection but only in this shell only. If I instead click on this grow selection, it grows via a mesh basis instead. So if I keep clicking it forever, it will select the whole UV shell. Then I can drag this outside. So yeah, what you might want to do is get rid of all these small parts. actually UV them together. It'd probably be a bit finicky. But uh, you do something like this. And then, you know, both barrels would be able to share the same material. And uh, that saves on again texture costs, you only have one texture instead of two, and that saves on many game file size actually. That's one couple megabytes of textures that you don't need to worry about. But I don't think I'll be UVing these barrels together, because they're from different... I think the octagonal barrel goes on the legendary sequoia, whereas the standard barrel goes on the regular hunting revolver. So if I was going to UV two together, I'd probably do the fluted. But yeah, that concludes the UV and wrapping portion. <laughs> I think next I'll be showing I pack that if it works. And then the actual baking in Marmoset. Alright, so I loaded the mesh. Uh, I had to export it as an OBJ, so I actually loaded in I pack that. But you can see here the wasted area. Uh, I think I said 15%. I can't actually remember <laughs> if this is actually a, a good wasted area or a really bad without the margin size. That's another name for the padding in between each... Um, oh yeah, you can actually change the... see if it changes the calculation. No, it doesn't. But this this program is basically an auto-packing program. I, I haven't used it in a while. I used it just out of interest to see what my usage was. But uh, I'd say it's, it's okay. It's an okay pack. I could maybe do better if I spent a lot longer on it, but there's so many mods to do for the for the weapon that uh, it's best not to spend too much time on it or it'll never get done. <laughs> also, the fact that I'm doing this tutorial alongside creating the weapon is already meaning it's taking a lot longer. But yeah, just thought I'd check out of interest. But I'd say that's pretty acceptable. Since there's so many parts and there's often a lot of weird parts as well, like this curved grip here. So yeah, happy with that.